Hello everybody, it's Clockwork here, and today I'm doing something a little bit different than my usual gameplay videos. I recently upgraded my setup from a using voice meter to using a hardware mixer. Uh, I know the most common mixer that most people use is the Behringer's, but they have a problem of minimal USB inputs, which is a little difficult for game streaming, I think. So I did some research and I found what I think is the perfect mixer for people streaming games. And I want to show my setup and talk about the mixer some. Over here we have my sound setup as it stands right now. We have the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK multi-track. This is important. I'll explain why in just a second, but the MTK costs more, but it's worth it for a streamer. I also have a Composer Pro for um, hardware processing. It's not required and actually having this sort of illustrates a small problem I have with this mixing board, but the features by far outweigh the problems. And if you want to up to the 22, which is much wider, it actually helps fix some of the problems. Although for me, at least I end up with a lot more inputs than I need. That's why I got this to begin with. The awesome thing about this mixer and why it's so good for streamers, I think, is that it has your typical 12 inputs. Six of them are monos for mics. And then the last six show up as um, are in stereo channels for stereo devices. And the nice thing here is that each one of these rows has a USB send and a USB return from Windows. They show up in Windows whenever you install the drivers as six USB speakers, stereo, and seven USB mics, which you can just access directly through WDM. It also has ASIO drivers, which I'll get to in a little bit, and they're useful, but it also just has straight up WDM drivers. So it just shows up as, as sound devices in control panel and any device or any app that can interact with Windows sound sources can interact with this mixer. The way it works is, the inputs go down into the preamp, and the preamp's pretty okay. I'm just using this for my mic still. And at this point, there's a USB return button. This is where it gets sent to Windows. You can do whatever you want to with it then. And then if you send data back to the mixer out of Windows, it comes in here, bypassing the preamp, because you don't need it if it's digital signal, and goes to the rest of the chain. As you can see here in Windows, we just have all the devices. These are the lineouts from the viewpoint of Windows, which means that this is input into the mixer out of Windows. So you have the six stereo mics, basically, and you have the seven stereo speakers. And they're just normal devices. And if you do something, like I have my bot set to play sounds through a channel in the mixer. It just works just like a normal audio device. And like I said, I have my bot set to play sounds through the mixer, through a specific channel. This is one of the spots where Windows 10 and this mixer play together great to give you the maximum flexibility for customizing your audio and having control over it because Windows 10 recently introduced, but the ability to, per device or per app, control the output channels. So you can see here that I have my bot in OBS outputting through 7.8. My default, well, my default goes out through HDMI. I'll explain that in a second. And I also have my desktop sounds, things that I don't want to be on stream, that go out through 1112. So they all show up as pairs. I think Windows just kind of expects devices to be stereo. So you get half as many as you expect, but you generally want to deal with stereo sound anyway. So all my games, my default goes out through my HDMI because a lot of games don't play well with the mixer, I found out. It's really annoying. It's not the way I wanted to do it originally, but we made it work. So I stream a bunch of console games as well as PC games. Everything over here goes through a converter to change it to HDMI from whatever it was originally. 
RGB, uh, composite, component, whatever. I try to avoid composite as much as possible, by the way. And then it goes up into the HDMI splitter that has an audio extractor on it. The HDMI splitter outputs to another splitter, which strips off protection so it can be captured, and into the computer, and also into my monitor so I can play as lag-free as possible. The audio, however, goes down into the mixer. So, so all the game audio is here on its own channel. So you can control it separately. All of the game audio comes in on its own channel so I can control it by itself. It comes down here, goes out to my computer via USB and comes back, goes down through the EQs, the fader, and on to the stream from there. We only have two major final outputs on this mixer. We have a group and we have the master. The headphones come out through the master. So I can't listen to myself while I stream because of the way I do my audio processing. There's about a 20 millisecond delay, which is just enough that the echo makes it so that it confuses me and I can't talk very well. So I can't listen to myself on my headphones while I stream, which means I can't use the master for the stream output. I have to use the group. Here you have two buttons on each output. The top one goes to master if it's pushed in and the bottom one goes to the group if it's pushed in. So everything that's going to the stream has the group button pushed in. Here, 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 here. This is my desktop. This only has master, but not group. So I can hear my desktop sounds like notifications and whatnot, but they don't get streamed out on accident. The reason why my gameplay goes to Windows is because I apply a compressor to it. I play some games like Mass Effect that have a very wide audio dynamic range. The gunshots are very sharp and I get some complaints about that. So I've added a single band compressor into this to tamp down the loudest sounds. It's a very selective compressor. It's set at a very high volume, but it helps a lot. I've gotten a lot less complaints about that since then. I also have my mic coming into Windows before it goes into the hardware processor because Audition's adaptive noise reduction is awesome. And my studio slash office isn't the most sonically clean place, especially in the summertime. We don't have air conditioning, so I have a fan running. And this strips out almost all the fan noise. So you can't even hear it when I'm talking unless you listen really, really closely. One of the nice things about this and the way the drivers are written is that you can use both the ASIO drivers inside of Audition and the WDM drivers inside of the Windows Sound Mixer at the same time. Both devices are active. I haven't tried to route something to the same channel from both. I don't know if that would work. I would expect it not to. I don't have a need to, so I don't do that. There are a few niggles, shortcomings, small problems with this that I wish were better, but they're not so bad that it makes me not use it. You only have one VU meter on the mixer, and it only monitors the master channel. It would be nice if you also had them for the group and for each input, so that way you could tell when you were clipping or getting close to clipping and what the relative sound level was, other than just listening to it. You do get clipping lights for each channel, so you know when it's just way, way too loud. The clipping lights also light when the channel is muted, which this one is. There also isn't effects, sends, and returns per channel. In order to do that here, since I'm sending everything over to this, what I have to do is take my mic and then I route it over through aux one right here. That goes over to here. It does its processing. And then I send it back to the second channel. And the second channel is actually the final processed mic output. And that's what it gets sent to the stream. So you have to waste an extra channel. It would be nice if you could just do a send receive, but it's all right. So there's also a signature 22, which adds 10 more channels. But the nice things it adds is a second group. So you have another way to add and subtract sources. And it also has five auxes instead of only three, which I don't need yet but I'm pondering removing Audition for the gameplay processing and adding a second stereo compressor, 
which then means I'd be using all of my oxes and two more channels over here because of the lack of send and receive effects. The Soundcraft is significantly more expensive. The USB chain adds cost and you pay for it. The typical Behringer mixer, which is comparable, costs about $200. Retail price on the Soundcraft is $450. Um, Soundcraft also has a B stock program. Um, that's how I got mine. I saved about $125. It was through an authorized dealer online and it made it a lot more affordable. Everything works fine. I didn't get a printed manual with it and I didn't get a, the usual snazzy box. It just came in a plain brown box with the correct um, foam to hold it. It's not a big deal. I know it came from an authorized dealer. I just tried to search. I couldn't find one currently available. Um, I'm not sure how often they come up, but if you want to get one to save some money, that's one way to look. eBay also works just fine for saving some money. You're getting it used, but these things last for quite a while from what I hear. So this has been a quick tour of how I do audio on my Twitch channel. Um, I typically do gameplay, a bunch of different games. Um, I didn't script this ahead of time, so if I left anything off that you want to know about, feel free to shoot me a question in the comments and I'll get back to you on it. If there's any desire, I could talk about other facets of how I do streaming. I'm still very small, but I try to research each improvement before I do it as much as possible. Um, thanks a lot for watching. It's clockwork, and I'll see you later.